Um, next up, we have uh, Viraj Puri. He is the co-founder and CEO of Gotham Greens. Have a big hand. So up until fairly recently, very few of us, uh, and by us, I mean the general population, specifically urban dwellers in the developing world, knew much about agriculture or farming or how food is produced, how it was shipped, where it came from. We mostly cared about what it tasted like. You go to the supermarket, you buy what you need to make a meal, you go to a restaurant, and you pick up, uh, you order something that looks good. But increasing ecological concerns, public health concerns about the environment, about public health, have, have brought food issues into the mainstream over about the last 10 years. More and more people, novelists, op-eds, documentary films, uh, cultural trends, have brought food issues into the mainstream, which is a good thing. So it is pretty remarkable that modern agriculture, the system that exists today, feeds as many people as it does across the world. Billions of, billions of mouths each day are fed um, using modern agricultural methods. Now, granted, a lot of people are still not getting that food. There are a lot of starving people, malnourished people in the world. But by and large, over 6 billion people, uh, we're doing a pretty good job feeding all of that. But that's not without adverse consequences. That's not without externalities. So modern agriculture is... the largest consumer of land on the planet. It's the uh, largest consumer of fresh water on the planet. About 60% of the world's fresh water withdrawals go toward conventional agriculture. It's the source of most of the world's water pollution and the source of about 15% of uh, global greenhouse emissions. So clearly there is a huge impact of the way we are producing food. Additionally, three major trends are going to strain the global food system over the next half century and place additional pressure on the environment. One, global population. According to official UN estimates, our population is going to surpass 9 billion by 2050. Second is urbanization. Two-thirds of these people are expected to be urban dwellers. What that means is that food, once it's produced, grown and harvested, has to be shipped hundreds, if not thousands of miles to reach urban consumers, which causes its own adverse consequences, not only flavor, taste, nutrition, but also the associated carbon emissions and the fuel consumption of shipping that food over long distances. And third is global warming. So climate change is expected to lead to widespread shortages of food, water, and arable land uh, in some of the world's most populous areas. So all these concerns have got people thinking, agronomists, economists, politicians, policymakers around the world, to, to urge us to move to more, toward more sustainable forms of agriculture. Now, what does sustainable mean? There's many, many different iterations of the word sustainable and what that means. Now, there's not going to be a single silver bullet or panacea, but it's going to take a concerted, combined effort, uh, various solutions, innovative solutions, based on their unique geographical, economic, cultural context, to make farming more sustainable. So whether it's organic, whether it's no-till agriculture, whether it's reducing the use of pesticides, whether it's producing food closer to home, for various reasons, agriculture has to become more sustainable. So within this broad movement of sustainable agriculture, we have a sliver called urban agriculture. So as the name implies, we want to be producing more food in urban areas. Now you might think that, look, cities don't have a lot of arable land, but people across cities around the world are doing super innovative things to bring agriculture into the city, using un underutilized rooftop spaces, using city lots. Um, some visionaries are even imagining multi-story skyscraper farms that are growing food. So my partners and I, Eric Haley and Jen Nelkin, we thought, let's create uh, an agricultural, an urban agricultural setup that could provide New Yorkers with really high quality, really tasty, delicious, produce consistently and reliably year-round. So for us, the enabling technology is something called controlled environment agriculture. So controlled environment agriculture is a combination of horticultural and engineering techniques that optimizes crop production, crop quality, production efficiency. So plants are grown in a 
um, innovative, intensive, advanced form of hydroponic agriculture. So by hydroponics, literally means water working. It eliminates the need for soil, so the plant gets all its nutrition through the water itself. It's sort of, uh, it allows for very high quality, high yields, very consistent, re reliable production, and, and, and great tasting um, um, products. So we figured, let's give this a shot, because this way we can really try to give it a go, make it financially viable, sustainable, in many different ways. So uh, controlled environment agriculture is practiced on a commercial scale in many parts of the world. It's technologically robust. A lot of people are doing it in the United States, Canada, Mexico, uh, the Netherlands, Israel, to name a few. So the picture on your right shows a very large greenhouse complex in Arizona. It's 300 acres. So people are already doing greenhouse agriculture, controlled environment agriculture. So really what we want to do is bring it to the picture on your left, which is the acres and acres of underutilized rooftop space in New York City. So more and more people are advocating this, and my organization, Gotham Greens, is one such group. So in 2008, my partners and I got together and said, okay, let's try to do this on a commercial scale in New York City. So we designed it, financed it, built it, and now are proud to um, operate a greenhouse in New York. So essentially, just to bring this all back together, we took a greenhouse like this and put it on a rooftop like this. And really what we got this is the production of that. So this is a 15,000 square foot state-of-the-art greenhouse facility located in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. It's about a mile from here, about 10 minutes away, where we uh, set out to produce over 100 tons of delicious, premium quality, pesticide-free produce for the local retail and restaurant market. So uh, this is no ordinary greenhouse, though. We have 55 kilowatts of solar panels that meet the a large portion of the facility's electrical demands to power the pumps and fans and motors to keep it climate controlled, to keep all the computer systems going. Uh, we use modern uh, recycling irrigation techniques. So this facility actually uses 10 times less water than conventional agriculture. So it's kind of counterintuitive because it's a water-based form of agriculture, but it's actually super water efficient because we capture all our irrigation water for reuse. It uses about 20 times less land as compared to conventional farms. We eliminate the use of, uh, the use of pesticides uh, by vi using various techniques, including the introduction of beneficial insects. So what that means is if we find pests in there that we don't like, we'll actually find its natural predator and introduce it in that facility to prey on the bad bugs and not eat our plants. Uh, we eliminate all sort of pesticide and fertilizer runoff, which is one of the leading sources of global water pollution, as I mentioned earlier. And, uh, and at the end of the day, we're producing delicious food. Uh, there's nothing better than fresh tasting vegetables. Um, we harvest daily, uh, six, seven days a week, deliver daily, and we can do this 365 days of the year. And what's also great about it is the social, and besides the environmental benefits, is also the sort of the social benefits that something like this can have. There's the pedagogical benefits. It's teaching youngsters how to produce food, uh, how food comes from, issues of nutrition, um, issues of uh, sort of uh, in other environmental issues like increasing urban green space, uh, reducing the urban heat island effect, you know, capturing rainwater to help stormwater runoff, and even on a philosophical level, just making our cities more sustainable, making them more vibrant places to live and work. Um, and from an economic development potential, we're proud to say we've produced over 20 full-time jobs, over 50 construction jobs in the constru on the construction of the facility. So there's a lot of benefits to doing what we're doing. But at the end of the day, we also have to make it commercially viable. So, you know, we're happy to say that we're in uh, over 20 retail chains and restaurants across the city, including Union Market, Fresh Direct, Whole Foods, D'Agostino. Um, and so that's really, really important. So this is just a small prototype of what we can do here in New York is, you know, actually produce more of our food here. We have plans to build more and more greenhouses in New York next year. We hope to build another one to actually start producing a meaningful amount of food right closer to home. That means keeping our dollars closer to home, providing economic job creation, and just making our city uh, and borough of Brooklyn a much cooler place to live and work in. So sort of bringing that back to the theme of today, uh, today's gathering is sort of redefining better this is by no means the be-all and end-all of agriculture. This is not going to save all of our agricultural um, issues that we have. And by no means is this going to sort of feed the entire world. But it's one such way, sort of, 
crafted based on our unique geographical context uh, in Brooklyn, not having a lot of arable land. And we think that really we can give this a go and become better farmers, become better citizens, become better stewards of the environment. So uh, with that, we're proud to be in Brooklyn and please look out for Gotham Greens uh, around Brooklyn and around New York. Thanks.